Okay, so thank you for, for having me. Uh, I'm going to share with you uh, an ID and an experiment that I did uh, just before Christmas. The ID came and how a little bit about uh, how the ID came about, and also a little bit uh, about the background and how we do things at the University of Oslo with CF Engine. So, it's a bit of background information there as well. Uh, my name is Jarle. Uh, don't bother with the last name, it's a uh, very difficult pronunciation. So, uh, but you can get me on Twitter, and uh, I also work at the University of Oslo uh, part-time and I also do some freelancing. So uh, I have my own company. I've been cooperating a little bit with Normation as well. And uh, I do uh, infrastructure engineering uh, consulting basically. So, with safe engineering and other stuff. So uh, yeah, let's jump straight in. This is how we do <coughs> CF Engine at the University of Oslo uh, today. We started use, uh, using CF Engine uh, in about 2010, I think, with the introduction of Red Hat 6. And um, previously we had a script based system run by Chrome, which was not working really well, or which wasn't scaling very well. It was run, running very seldom, once a day only. So we wanted to have something more agile and went to CF Engine. And we quickly discovered that uh, running CF Engine would uh, be much more powerful, but it would also break things a lot faster if we made mistakes. So previously it was okay to check in code into uh, production and then just check it out on a couple of nodes, then we would be confident that it wouldn't break next night when the script was synced. But this will break within five minutes. So we established uh, an automated testing procedure where we have uh, Garrett as a combined uh, pull review tool uh, and uh, a Git server, a Git repository, where we have role-based access to different uh, people. So we basically have, we made, even if it was only the Unix script that started using CF Engine, we made uh, some effort into making it possible for other people to safely commit code to CF Engine and have it automatically tested by Jenkins. So this is just rolling back a VMware image and uh, running tests. For the moment it's just run on, uh, on Red Hat uh, because that's the most important uh, platform for us. So this, this were, uh, we were thinking about these platforms but uh, other things uh, come and came in the way so it's not yet, yet implemented. <laughs> But the point here is that uh, we have some roles. We have uh, the contributors uh, from the different application groups, uh, mainly, that push CF Engine code, it, code uh, related to uh, their applications. Uh, and then we have gatekeepers that uh, put thing, things into production after reviewing the code and after Jenkins has uh, been verifying that it actually works at the very basic level. Uh, at least. Uh, we also have some uh, external node classification uh, system where we have, we have a host management system uh, and user management system called Cerebrum. Uh, it connects with SIP and the student administration system for, for users. And users and groups are automatically created uh, into this uh, common repository. And we also have uh, our DNS registration inside here. So this is, was an existing host management system that uh, was uh, extended to, to uh, use uh, host roles, basically. So we can tie uh, host roles uh, to the host inside this host management system. And we export that information out to the CF Engine servers so that each host can have its uh, uh, list of external classes set based on something that we decide in order to make uh, the, for, the, for the things that we want to tell the machines that they actually are going to fill a particular role that we can't auto detect from the machines themselves by using classes. But this is how we do it now. So the background for me started uh, looking for what comes is that I wanted to try to get rid of that uh, connection 
because it's uh, yeah, this is a huge monster and it's very difficult to get changes in there. <coughs> so we want to, to liberate the whole strolls, uh, or I wanted to, to to look for opportunities to liberate the whole strolls away from Cerebrum and rather create something like this with some role-based access uh, connecting to LDAP and uh, Redis database and having uh, the agents uh, using Zero MQ to uh, ask for their uh, list of external classes based on what's defined here. And uh, Zero MQ is quite cool. Who, who heard about it uh, before? Yeah. It's like uh, a TCP socket. <laughs> but with some illegal radio isotopes from secret Soviet atomic cities from Spandik and Cosmic Rays. This is from the homepage of Zero MQ. <laughs> and uh, you get a, a network socket with superpowers. So you can, you, you don't have to, to focus so much on the low level networking stuff, but you can actually use these libraries with uh, all, it, there's libraries for Python, Perl, C, all languages that you can think of and you can connect uh, using the same paradigm, basically. And it's very low, uh, low, low on resource consumption, and it's, it's kind of the zero stands for zero brokers, zero latency, zero administration, zero cost, zero waste. So that's, uh, okay, that's the advertisement. <laughs> if you want to know more, it's uh, on the Zero MQ homepage. So just ask questions as we go, we can discuss. So, so I started looking for, uh, for I started googling around for uh, for uh, zero MQ and solutions based on zero MQ, and then I came across this one, uh, which is actually using zero MQ. Uh, I didn't know much about Solstack before, so I started re reading up on it, and uh, <coughs> basically it. Uh, I thought that it, it was a parallel ex execution system, so I thought that it had to stick to the agents and we had to open ports on the agents in order to make it do so. But it turns out that it uses zero MQ public, uh, publisher sub subscriber uh, and then the agent connects to the publisher and just listens for commands. So it's uh, the TCP connection goes up to the master and it just sits there and listens for commands. And it's highly parallel uh, and efficient way of uh, instructing the, the salt agents, which is called minions, by the way, how to execute uh, their stuff. So my main, main motivation for looking into the salt stack was the, the parallel execution and orchestration part of it. And within that context also, mainly for looking at the inventory uh, collection and information collection from the nodes. Uh, because uh, this is something which uh, is not uh, easy with the engine community, it's straight out of the box. So that's the main motivation. There are some properties of Solstack, which you probably know from before, but uh, yeah, it's the zero MQ that made me look closer at it. Uh, it's very data driven, so everything you put uh, in uh, is by default YAML. You define the define configuration using YAML, uh, which is quite clean, I think. And uh, you get uh, YAML or JSON or uh, whatever you like out again. But the point is that it's structured data, so it's easy to to collect information in a structured way and put it into a structured uh, database, like uh, Elasticsearch. I'm going to look at later. So, uh, SALT has a master <laughs> and it uses public-private keys. That sounded uh, similar to something I've seen before. And uh, it uses a uh, published sub subscriber to talk to the, the minions. <laughs> so, the minions are the agents, yeah. So, uh, its uh, minion has a permanent uh, TCP connection uh, to the master? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's async, so it doesn't matter which one comes up first. That's also a property of the zero MQ. Okay. So you can, so you can start a minion, it will just wait for the master to come up, or vice versa. So mm -hmm. it's just, yeah. So the, there's some 
yeah, some care needs to be taken on the application side to, to handle that. The underlying mechanism is actually as asynchronous. Yeah. But that's handled by Solstack. So what uh, <coughs> I started with, was my main, like I said, my main motivation was uh, for inventory. And uh, Solstack has this uh, uh, command you can run on. This means on all hosts that uh, Salt knows about. The Salt knows about. It's dark. And grains items will just list uh, a data structure with the, the standard inventory of the host or the minion for all of the minions. And it will just put out a log JSON data structure, uh, which you can do what you like with basically. And what I wanted to, to try out was to just uh, store it into Elasticsearch. Uh, I looked at Elasticsearch because we used, uh, I, I tried uh, Logstash uh, and I liked the, the, the user friendliness of the Elasticsearch API. It's very easy to put data in it, and very easy to search for data in Elasticsearch. So you have, a, you have some JSON, you have Elasticsearch that receives JSON and can store it. So it's just a matter of creating a little bit of Glue uh, that uh, reads in this JSON from standard in in this case, and uh, use uh, some uh, web client modules in Perl to just uh, put uh, each host object uh, into an index in Elasticsearch, and then all of those grains items will then be stored underneath that object in Elasticsearch, and you can. You can search it back and, and uh, use it to automatically configure other stuff based on this or making reports or whatever. You can also create your uh, own execution modules in Salstack. It's quite easy, uh, where you can query more information on the host and it will automatically just uh, be propagated to the master and output in, in JSON. So you can, you can extend it quite a lot because this information is quite static so uh, it's mainly detected when the minion starts up so it doesn't really make sense to ask for new information very often so if you want more dynamic information you probably create execution modules that queries uh, more often and you can update information based on that but the method is the same <coughs> Okay, so, uh, so a little bit of recap of uh, the key thing. Uh, turns out that uh, these uh, keys are exactly uh, the same, or at least very compatible with what CF Engine community uses, as far as I public uh, private keys. And then uh, I wanted to, I got an idea that maybe it's possible to. Uh, reuse the CF engine keys that we have in our infrastructure already to be able to bootstrap, uh, bootstrap Solstack without uh, having to re-authenticate the Salt master against the minions. Uh, yeah, so it's basically the same thing with the CF engine. So the question, can we reuse, reuse the existing CF engine PKI to avoid man in the middle attack? Uh, exposure uh, when uh, bootstrapping the salt clients basically and yes we can <laughs> so questions so far oh, how am I doing on time that's quite fast I think okay so uh, I created uh, first I just uh, did a pre proof of concept with commands uh, that uh, did this uh, and thanks to Jimmy's here I also got tipped about a hidden option in OpenSSL that made this much easier because otherwise I had to use a Perl script and it's, uh, this part takes place on, on the agent so it's uh, better to not be dependent on a Perl script on agents and rather use something that's already there which is OpenSSL. Open uh, but uh, anyway that uh, worked uh, quite well with just a command so I, I just uh, subsequently created uh, some CF engine uh, code that will actually do this both on the master and on the agent so that uh, this code will, I will just walk you through it, uh, uh, will then uh, bootstrap the salt agents without uh, 
re-establishing <coughs> trust uh, with the salt and, uh, and the minions, the master and the minions. So for the minion side, it's easy. It's a matter of uh, uh, running the optsSL command uh, with the standard uh, private key passphrase of CF Engine, which is commonly known because it's officially on the GitHub repository. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter because it's a private key that makes, makes the difference or makes it uh, private, basically. It's not the passphrase. Um, and then the file the private key of CF Engine, and then the, uh, the out form needs to be EEM, because that's what salt uses, and then uh, the output file. So if, uh, in this case, it's limited to Red Hat, because this works, uh, it's only been tested on Red Hat, the Red Hat Enterprise, and, uh, and this uh, salt minion key if required, private key does not exist, then this command is executed. It will basically take the the private key from var CF engine pp keys and convert uh, it and write out a new key to the minion private key uh, file in, in the proper location. And the same with the public key, basically. <coughs> and then uh, only if those keys are okay, then will the minion start. And the, the Package is available in uh, Apple's repository in Red Hat Enterprise, which we have by default uh, in the University of Oslo. So you can just add it. And uh, yeah, some <coughs> permission for the private key uh, so to make it only readable for uh, root. And then uh, we put on the master, it's just one key, right? Uh, so we just generated the key on the master. And we put the public key of the master into the CF Engine repository, and we just repo copy it from the CF Engine server machine and into the correct location <coughs> on the, all the agents. Okay, so by doing that, you you basically make the salt minion trust the master that you're going to use. Yeah, and then uh, this is also. Uh, the setting is not start salt minion uh, class based on uh, if it's not running. Uh, yeah, and then it's just checking if these files exist, setting the classes, and <coughs> compound class to set the compound uh, class that uh, all the keys are okay, which then again, as we saw down here, will trigger the minion to start. Yeah, and then it's the five locations, the CF engine passphrase, and this one we opened for, and these are the salt uh, paths to the keys. So that's the minion done. On the master, uh, uh, who knows how we can get to all the keys? Well, information guys, of course, everybody knows that. So it's a stupid question, but uh, anyway. You can, uh, uh, the, the keys, the file names of the keys are these MD5 hash um, names, right? But the mapping between the host names and <coughs> MD5 hash names is, uh, it can be done by using this command. So CF key minus S shows you the list of, of the, the CF agent that this CF server uh, machine has seen, <coughs> and also the MD5 uh, uh, name that will be the correct file on this, right? So what we do here is to to read as a string the just output of this uh, command, which output something like that uh, with uh, the name and uh, there's spaces here, so there it will be this will be element number eight. This will be number two. So yeah. Okay. Um, so host name is 2 and MD5 is 8 in the array. So this is just converted to an array uh, and we strip away the, the lines that we don't uh, want there by regex. So we only pick the lines that actually contain uh, a host and MD5, which is what we're interested in. 
Uh, and then we get uh, the indices, uh, create the iterator for each line of the output, uh, or each, each uh, yeah, index in the, in the array, basically. And we need to, because later we will see that we need to do something when this key does not exist, and then we need to pre-canonify all the uh, host names. Uh, because it's, uh, you can't say not canonify and then uh, when, when you use if var class, we will see that. Later. So that's just a uh, uh, workaround, basically. Yeah, and then this some paths to, to the key, key locations and the OpenSSL commands. And then there is the classes that is set if the if the key files uh, doesn't exist, then we use the uh, the whole we iterate uh, over the over the <coughs> s list that came out of the indices of the array. Uh, so all elements, basically, all the lines in the CF key minus s output is iterated over, and then we look at uh, the second, which is the host name, and if this uh, file exists that is named in this directory with this name that matches this uh, second element. If it exists, uh, then the class is set basically, and it does that for all the classes. And it uh, adds the salt master uh, package. Uh, and then it uses the same iterator to run for each. Of, uh, of the elements in the, open, uh, in the um, CF key minus S output, it checks if uh, this uh, it, it checked if the key uh, was existing before, and it set the class if it, if the class was set right. If, if the file existed, the class was set, and then uh, it runs the command that generates the correct key with the correct name in for all the minions that is going to be trusted by this master and put them in the right collection in the right uh, location uh, and only if it didn't exist and this is why we need to not exist uh, that uh, doesn't work if you use canonify here it just yeah so it just as a workaround for pre canonifying the host names and also, if uh, by accident the minion has been started, it will have uh, delivered a key to the master in the pre, uh, pre-check directory. So that is where the keys are uh, located when, when the minion contacts the master, and it's still not uh, trusted, basically. So we now, now use this automated met method to trust uh, minions, and uh, then we just remove those three keys that might be there. So for all of these keys that we actually trusted, we do uh, remove them also from the three key uh, directory if it's there. So because that can actually uh, create mismatch. Uh, if, if it's on both places, it will be not trusted. So, yeah. so a list of keys, sorry for mm -hmm. interrupting. No, no, no. I don't know this, the source track. Yeah. So for each key requesting to be accepted, yeah. it's been stored somewhere. Uh, and yes. Once it is accepted, yeah. it's removed from there yeah. and stored elsewhere. It's a command for accepting keys. Yeah. Uh, and you should, the manual procedure of doing this is that you check the key based on that you logged in on both the agent and, uh, and the server, and you match the, the checksums on the keys. Yeah. Uh, and you check the, the it has not already been accepted because it's in the directory of uh, mm. only the ones that requested. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, pretty good. Actually. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe that. So it won't be accepted unless mm. you use uh, salt key to mm. accept it, and then what happens is just that it's moved from that directory to the directory that we put this key in. That's uh, that yeah. sounds nice. Yeah, that's, uh, it's quite neat. Yeah. And just some report uh, if we needed to generate uh, keys. So. That was quite fast, actually, to not walk through. But uh, do we have any time for questions? I have some backup slides if we <laughs> don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. How many hosts 
or uh, how many minions are, are in your setup? And, uh, well, we plan to use it uh, on all the CF agents, and that will be around 1,000. Okay. Uh, I'm quite curious on the performance of zero and two as well. Yeah, and, uh, uh, we, we haven't done it yet. We've just uh, done the proof of concept. So hmm. we, we plan to use uh, this uh, on the... Because we have now C three CF engine servers, yeah. which is uh, why I have made some extra... Hmm. Uh, this is two then, but we added the third one just recently because of scale. And uh, of course if you do this uh, procedure of all those servers, <coughs> you, what we do is the standard CF engine way of uh, kind of selecting the primary server uh, hmm. based on uh, select class, uh, connect, contacting either that server first or the other ones first and then vice versa falling back to the other one. Uh, and that means if you do the CF key minus S on this server, you will get half of the hosts, right? Yeah. Which you can command <coughs> from that server on half of the hosts, or one third in our case now, that mm -hmm. we can command from each of the CF engine servers. And you don't really know which ones you can command from. So you have to, uh, if you're going to not do this, <laughs> then you would have to do it on several machines. But it turns out you can use uh, something called Syndic, Salt Syndic. Uh, if you then install Salt Syndic on each of the CF server machines, you can use a Syndic master that talks <coughs> to each of the Syndics, and then you can get a unified view from the Syndic master. And it's access like a, everything from there. Like a super hub, let's say. Yeah, it's like a that. master or master or a super hub or something. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Is Salt Syndic uh, also? <coughs> Similarize the, the, the keys from the, the clients. The Salt Syndic needs to trust the the uh, min uh, the minions of these ones so that they can forward commands. I think it's a it's, it's not a minion. It's actually the Salt Syndic is a minion-ish thing that runs beside it. But it it's the one that so it's just a matter of exchanging keys between a few machines. So and then this is delegated further down to the, what these machines, these salt, salt masters running here knows about. <coughs> mm. so, unless there is more questions. This was my little <laughs> thought experiment. Okay.